Fellowship Youth, welcome to our first week of the Movement Series. You made it, you're on YouTube, soon we'll be on Zoom, it's gonna be a great night. I'm Caroline and I am Camp and Youth Director here at Fellowship. And my name is Sam, I'm the Youth Pastor here at Fellowship and we say this all the time at Fellowship Youth, we are all Jesus, all people, all seasons. Uh, that means no matter where you are in life right now, um, we're just glad you're tuning in and God loves you so much and uh, really has something for you tonight. But if it's your first time here, we want to welcome you. Um, type in the chat, it's my first time, and we just want to celebrate you and love on you. We're glad you're here. Even if it's your first time or however many times you've come, invite a friend. We talk about this truly every week, and then every week we also talk about how we talk about it every week. But we say it because it's so impactful. We've talked about it in our influence series, how much influence you have just through a simple text, DM, whatever it is to a friend who um, the Lord has maybe placed on your heart who needs to be here tonight. So text that friend, call that friend, whatever you need to do to get him here. Um, and tonight we have the one and only Michael Field. Pastor Michael Field is kicking off our movement series, you guys. I don't know if you know how big of a deal this is, but you know, we basically used our whole paycheck to to pay him to be here. It was like a whole World thing. World-class so, speaker. Yeah, we made it happen. And he's here tonight um, yes. bringing the word. So we are stoked on that. Um, and then after, like I said, 7.30 life groups on Zoom. Um, if you don't know how to get there, head back to the landing page, click the Zoom link, and we cannot wait to have some fun and dive into life groups afterwards. Love it. Yeah, we're in our first uh, week of our series called Movement. And this is a a series on racial reconciliation uh, because February is Black History Month. We wanna start having conversations and continue having conversations about racial reconciliation uh, and what it means to follow Jesus. This is not disconnected from us following Jesus. This is a part of our discipleship journey yeah. uh, and spiritual formation. And so um, Caroline, did you know 500,000 young people were a part of the civil rights movement? 500,000. It's like our, our youth would do yeah. it. I see it. They would, yeah. they would. And uh, I really believe, uh, we really believe God has uh, is initiated a movement of young people uh, to bring reconciliation, to bring hope and compassion uh, and unity uh, and truth telling yeah. uh, to a uh, broken and divided world um, and nation right now. So um, we're excited for this series. Pastor Michael, one of the best pastors I know is kicking us off tonight. Um, so we got a great night plan. We also have something incredible happening in March. Caroline, tell us about it. Yes, it's Sam's birthday. Oh, my birthday. Yeah, yeah, that's one thing. The other thing happening in March, Youth Summit, y'all. Our first Way Youth better. Summit, <laughs> equal, but you know, different. Um, March 5th and 6th, we can't wait. Um, it's going to be a time, um, Friday and Saturday night, where we're going to dive into um, just more of where God is calling you in this season and the purpose he has for you um, in all the seasons that you will face in your life. Um, so there's going to be speakers, giveaways, um, and sessions, and we cannot wait to have you there. So um, let, registration will be open soon, but March 5th and 6th, mark your calendars. I will be there. It's in my calendar. I cannot wait. Our first ever youth summit. It's really? going to be amazing. We're excited for tonight. Before we get into scripture together and before Pastor Michael preaches, we are going to have a time of worship. Mm -hmm. uh, and so wherever you find yourself in your home, in your living room, uh, create space to connect with God in these next few moments. Invite the spirit of the living God to meet you um, as we worship together. So Daniel, I'm going to pass it over to you. Take it away. We love y'all.
Michael and I'm a pastor here at Fellowship and I just want to say thank you so much for having me uh, at youth tonight. I'm so excited to be here. I worked with high schoolers for years, worked with junior hires and I just love the stage of life that you are at and I just want to start by saying uh, I see you, um, that your leaders see you. Uh, these past 11 months have been the hardest 11 months of so many of our lives and I just have to say I cannot imagine what you have gone through um, these last 11 months. Um, it wasn't supposed to be this way. Uh, you've lost so much and have had so much taken away from you uh, in this time. And uh, I know we might not know each other, but I just want to say as a big brother to you, as an uncle to you, as a pastor to you, that I'm proud of you. Uh, you're here. You showed up. You keep showing up. And that matters so much in this season that we keep showing up. Speaking of the last 11 months, uh, I don't know about you, but I'll just never forget last summer. I'll never forget last summer as we talk about this series of justice, and we talk about what justice looks like for us as followers of Jesus, or if you're just checking Jesus out, what does it look like to do justice? I can't help but think of the summer of 2020, when we saw so many unarmed black men and women uh, murdered in this country. And it was absolutely heartbreaking. I know if you paid attention, your heart was broken by this, the injustice that we saw. 
And the response to these injustices was unlike anything I've ever seen in my lifetime. And to be honest, it's unlike anything we have ever seen in the history of the world. More people marched and protested and marched for justice in 2020 than at any other time in the history of the world. This theme of injustice, this theme of bringing about justice uh, is such a huge theme in our culture today. And I don't know about you, but in times like this, it can make me wonder, what am I supposed to do? What's my role in all of this? And uh, when I think about that, I think about what's my inspiration? What am I supposed to do in response? And I can feel really, really overwhelmed. Uh, I don't know where to start. It feels so big and I feel so small. Um, you know what I love about Jesus? He talked about justice all the time. Jesus loved justice. So when I think about my role in bringing about justice in the world, I don't have to look to any influencers. I don't have to look to famous activists or organizations. I don't have to look out there for my example. I get to look in here in the word of God. I get to look at the life of Jesus. So tonight we're going to talk about Jesus and justice. And the first thing that you need to know is that justice starts with Jesus. Wherever you're watching, just say that with me. Justice starts with Jesus. And why would I say that? What does that even mean? Well, justice starts with Jesus because Jesus started with justice. That's like a tongue twister. Let me say that again. Uh, justice starts with Jesus because Jesus actually started with justice. When you look in Luke 4, uh, in, the, in the Gospels, in this book of Luke, uh, you see Jesus on his first big public day of ministry. He went down to the synagogue where he, he grew up, and this would actually be considered like Jesus' first day on the job. It would be like first day of school vibes. If you're showing up, you're putting your best foot forward, you're letting everybody know what you're about. You got your outfit dialed in, you're ready to go, and you're going to open your mouth and say, this is the reason I am here. Allow me to introduce myself. And Jesus, as he introduces himself to the world, he could have said anything. He is God in human form, and he could have literally said anything to announce himself. But he starts very specifically and very intentionally by quoting an Old Testament verse about justice. Listen to what he said. Listen to what happens here in Luke 4, verses 16 through 19. It says that Jesus went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. This is where he grew up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He went to church, and he stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. Listen to this. This is the first thing Jesus says. This is him announcing himself to the world. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me, listen to this, to proclaim good news. Good news to who? Good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom. Freedom for who? Freedom for the prisoners. He, in recovery of sight. Recovery of sight for who? Recovery of sight for the blind. And to set the oppressed free to pro proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Friends, uh, if Jesus had a mission statement, if he had a thesis statement, I don't know if you learned that in junior high, you'll learn it soon though. If you had a thesis statement to say, this is what I'm all about, this would be it. He's saying, this is why I'm here. This is what I'm about. I'm here to show up for people who have been wronged. I'm here to show up for people who can't show up for themselves. I'm here to show up for people who are suffering under unjust actions of somebody else who has power over them. I'm here to show up for the powerless. I'm here to show up. I'm here to show up. I'm here to bring justice. Friends, all justice starts with Jesus. Say that with me. All justice starts with Jesus. Why? Because Jesus started with justice. That's the way he introduced himself to the world. That was his mission statement here on earth was to bring about justice. You might be saying, okay, Michael, that's cool. He wants to bring about justice, but what is justice? How would we define justice if we're talking about it? I'm so glad you asked. Let's work with this working definition tonight together. Justice equals making wrong things right. Justice is just making things that are wrong right. According to who? According to God and his word. 
You see, God has an original tent, or an original plan, or an original purpose for all of us and for the entire world. And when sin enters the picture, it throws that picture off. It diminishes that picture. It, 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 it holds people down. It, uh, it, it pushes people out. It keeps people out. It keeps people from becoming everything that they are created and called to be. That is where injustice is happening. Jesus says, I came to make all things right. I came to make everything wrong right according to God's word, according to how God sees the world, not anybody else, just according to how God sees the world. So uh, when, when, when he says this, he's saying, uh, I came to make all things new. I came to take everything that was wrong and make it right. And you don't just see that in Jesus's mission statement right when he shows up. You see that throughout the entirety of Jesus's life in his ministry. He continues with justice. He is constantly making wrong things right. Wherever he showed up and there was a situation that was wrong, you see it time and time and time again, he made those wrong things right. He shows up for nobody, for those that nobody else shows up for. He touches the untouchable that nobody else would even pay attention to and heals them. He stands up for the orphan, for that person who doesn't have a dad or a mom. He would stand with the widow who in that day, if you lost your husband, you would have no power, no standing in society. He stood with those people. He spends time with people nobody else will even look at, let alone spend time with. And he shows up, not just to show up, but to make wrong things right according to God's word. I want you to think about your life right now. I want to think about the situations that you find yourself in. What would it look like for you to make wrong things right? What would it look like for the situations that you show up in for you to make wrong things right? Maybe it's on social or in a chat that you're on where somebody's just getting hammered, somebody's just getting bullied, somebody's just getting knocked down over and over and over by other people's words. What would it look like for you to be like Jesus and show up and make wrong things right in that chat and stand on the side of the oppressed in that situation? What would it look like for you, for that kid that nobody likes, that nobody understands, that's different, um, what would it look like for you to be just like Jesus and make a wrong thing right by, instead of excluding them and extending the torture that they feel by not being included, what would it look like for you to invite them in and get to know them? Guys, what would it look like for you when your boys are talking about some girl in a dirty way that you know you should never talk about one of God's daughters like? What would it look like for you to make that wrong situation right and just say, hey, that's not how we talk about God's beloved daughters. What would it look like for us when we come across racism or we come across people putting somebody else down for the color of their skin? Or their ethnicity or what they have or what they don't have to be just like Jesus as we show up in those situations and be a voice for the voiceless to stand on the side of those that Jesus stood on the side of what would that look like in your life friends if we were like Jesus bringing about justice in this world making wrong things right Okay, so you're saying, okay, I get it, Michael. Jesus is about justice. Jesus is about making wrong things right according to God's word. That's great, but where do I start? It can be so overwhelming to think of doing justice. There are so many injustices in the world that I see, and I'm just one person. I'm just little me. Where do I even start? Uh, I think the thoughts that come to my mind when I think about doing justice is, okay, do I have to be a great speaker, have a powerful personality? Do I have to be this influencer that everybody looks up to and everybody follows? Do I need to march and use a megaphone or start a campaign on social media? Where do I even start, friends? You need to hear this. If you want to do justice, start with empathy. All justice, big and small, starts with empathy. And just, just in case you don't know what empathy means, empathy is it's just really, really, really simple. It's stepping into somebody else's shoes to understand what they're going through. It's getting out of your own uh, skin and getting into theirs just to see the world through their eyes and to just imagine what they might be experiencing. It's stepping into someone else's shoes to understand what they're going through. You have to hear this without empathy. You won't even be able to understand what's fully wrong in order to make it right. Without empathy, you're going to miss the injustice that's happening right under your nose. Without empathy, you absolutely cannot do justice. And that's what I love about Jesus. Uh, he has this unbelievable ability to step into someone else's shoes. 
He had empathy for people. And I need you to hear this. What you see time and time and time again, because of Jesus' empathy, because of his ability to step into somebody else's shoes, is that he did this all the time. He made time for people that nobody else had time for. Think about that. Because he could step in their shoes, he made time for people that nobody else had time for. Jesus was busier than any of us, and he made time for people that people wanted nothing to do with. He has this empathy, and he shows us that when we make time for people, we can help wrong the things that are right in their life according to God's word. So just just a couple of highlights of Jesus's ministry so you can understand this. Um, There was this time where Jesus was just, he was, he had a man come to him and say, hey, my daughter is dying. I need you to come help, come right away. So Jesus is on the way. Jesus is on the case. He's going to go heal this girl. And and he has so many people all around him, people rubbing up on, on his shoulders on all sides. And all of a sudden he realizes that a woman has touched his robe and that power had gone out from him and he had actually just healed somebody because she just touched his robe. And, and again, Jesus was so busy, but because he was empathetic, because he could put himself in her shoes, he realized that she was dealing with this issue with her body that she had been dealing with for years. She had suffered for so long. She had suffered so much that she was an outcast from her community. Nobody would go around her. He realized that she must have been so afraid to come around all these people who, if they knew what was actually going on with her, would just throw her out of out of the city and get her out of their community, that she braved all of that, was brave enough to touch his cloak. Jesus put himself in her shoes and understood all that she went through to touch his cloak. And he realized that there was so much wrong. There was this hurting in her life that wouldn't get well. She was not in community. She wasn't loved by people because of what was going on with her. He realized all the wrong. He made time for her. In that moment, he made things right by healing her. And he didn't just heal her privately. He healed her in front of her whole community and told all of them about it so that she wouldn't just experience physical healing, but that she would be welcomed back into the community that she was an outcast from. Because Jesus had empathy, he made time for people. Because he made time for people, he could see the wrong. And because he saw the wrong, he could make the wrong right. I love Jesus. He healed these blind guys on the side of the road. They were, they, were, they were crying out to him. Again, he's super busy. And they're crying out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Heal us, heal us. And Jesus was so busy, he had a thousand things to do that day. His disciples were telling him to come along. And, and he stops. And he puts himself in their shoes and realizes they must be so desperate to be yelling this loud. It must be so hard to be dealing with blindness like they've been dealing with. It's affected every part of their life. He stops because he has empathy. He makes time for them because he has empathy and he heals them and gives them sight. The last thing that I love about Jesus is that he had these friends and he had a specific friend named Lazarus. Lazarus um, died and his sisters send word to Jesus that Lazarus is dead. They had been asking him to come and asking him to heal their brother Lazarus, but he was, he was pretty far away, so he couldn't get there on time. And when he hears word that Lazarus has died, he has such empathy. He can step into the shoes of Lazarus' sisters and his family who's called out to him, and he says, they must be hurting so bad, I'm going to come back. And as he comes back, this is crazy, he comes back and we get the shortest verse in all of Scripture when Jesus comes back. It says, Jesus wept. It is this perfect picture of Jesus putting himself in the shoes of his friends who just lost their brother and just weeping with them because of how sad they were. And in that moment, because he had empathy, because he could step into their shoes, he he made the wrong thing right. He raises Lazarus from the dead and brings him back to his family. Just an example from our own life, you might be thinking like, okay, cool, that's Jesus, like, that's insane, like, of course Jesus can do that, but what about us? Um, It doesn't take much. In college, me and my friends noticed that there was a a couple that was, you know, living without a home, and they were on the street, we would see them at Starbucks, so we just started having coffee for them. We made time for them, and as we spent time with them, we started to have more empathy for them. We realized they couldn't get showers, and they, they had a hard time getting food. So once a week, we would just invite them over to our house. We would cook a big spaghetti meal and have them use our showers. So that at least once a week, they were getting a meal, and they were getting a shower. And they started telling us about our finances, and so we took care. We helped them organize and arrange their finances. And, and just fast forward the stories. It only took a couple of us 
just paying attention, putting ourselves in their shoes, making time for them, understanding their situation, realize, man, it's wrong that they don't have a house. And little by little, uh, we just poured into them and helped them out. And fast forward to a year and a half later, and they were living in the apartment underneath us. We live in the same apartment complex. And it's just such a beautiful moment of, yeah, there's so many injustices that are so big in this world, and we are called as followers of Jesus to pay attention to the big injustices, to, to fight against the injustice, this is to make wrong things right on such a big level, but it really starts right here. It starts with us seeing people clearly. It starts with us having empathy, putting ourselves in their shoes, and just making time and saying, man, you know what, what can we do to make this wrong thing right? And in that situation, it took us a year and a half of just hanging out with our friends, Pat and Daniel, and figuring out how we could right the wrongs in their life and help them become the people that God has created and called them to be. And that's what I want you to know. When we're making things right, we're really helping people understand that God has so much for their lives and we want to remove the barriers that are in their lives from them becoming everything that God has called them to be. That's who he has called us to be as his followers. Jesus cares so much about justice. He cares so much about making wrong things right. And he really has invited us to work with him to make wrong things right to remove barriers that keep people from becoming everything that he's called them to be. And that's what we get to do with him. Just think about your week. Who might you need to show empathy to this week? Who's somebody that you just need to pay attention to, make some time for, put yourself in their shoes, and then see how God shows up. See how he might call you to help remove barriers in their life that's just keeping them down or keeping them from becoming who he's called them to be. Where do you need to help make wrong things right? The last, the last thing I want to say is um, I love our God so much. I love Jesus so much. Um, because before um, you ever have empathy for anybody else, Jesus has empathy for you. Uh, before he's calling you to go do anything else out there, before he's calling you uh, to go help make wrong things right out there, he's coming to you and saying, I want to make wrong things right in your life. He's coming to you and he's saying, I love this. I love this. Jesus has stepped into your shoes. Jesus has walked a mile in your shoes. Jesus knows what you're going through so he can empathize so deeply with it. He knows what it's like to suffer and to hurt. He knows what it's like to lose people you love. He knows what it's like to be disappointed, to be ignored, to have things taken from you, to feel like you're forgotten. So if you're in that space tonight, if you're feeling any of those things, even if nobody else on planet Earth understands any of that, you have a God who sees you so clearly, who can empathize with you, who understands what you're going through, and he just wants us to tell him about it. When I was a kid, I was in kindergarten, and I got this, I got this, um, we had this report, or not a report, a project, and it was this big art project, and I was an awful artist, but I, I do this art project, and my teacher gives me the biggest star on my paper. And I don't know why, I was six years old, but I was obsessed with how big the star was on my, on my project that I turned in. And so my six-year-old self gets picked up from school, goes home, can't wait to show my whole family, and I'm searching all through my backpack, and I lost it. It was gone. And I'll never forget my six-year-old self being devastated that I lost this project that I got such a big star on. And, and I'll never forget my older brother, who's five years older than me, he crawls into bed with me that night because I'm just crying in bed because I lost this project. And he crawled in bed with me and he just started asking me questions about what I drew. He started asking me questions about what the project looked like. He asked how big the star was and had me with my finger draw how big the star was on the wall. And it was this perfect picture of what I think that God does with us is when we're going through something, when we're hurting, when we've lost something, even if it doesn't feel like a big deal to anybody else in the world, we have a God who will, like my brother did, crawl into bed with us, crawl into our situation with us, ask us questions about it, let us cry about it ask us about what we lost so that he can truly understand what we're going through. And I realized uh, in thinking back on that moment that, friends, if, if it's a big deal to you, it's a big deal to God. 
no matter what anybody else thinks about it, if whatever you're going through, if it's a big deal to you, if there is wrong in your life, it's a big deal to God, and God wants to help make that right. Um, the beautiful thing, too, is that he surrounded us with community. He surrounded you with your leader and with the, with the friends uh, that you break up into your groups with and your life groups. And um, he surrounded us with people to remind us that we can be honest about what's wrong and that they can come alongside and help make those things right for us. Help us become who God's created and called us to be so that we can join Jesus in the justice work that uh, he wants to do. So a couple of big questions that I want you to think about tonight. Um, where do you see wrong in the world that needs to be made right? Where do you see it? Where is that? Where is that wrong that you're seeing in culture and society and school? Uh, maybe it's even in your family or in a friend group. Where do you see wrong that needs to be made right? Maybe it's just in a friendship that you need to make it right. Um, the second question that I want you to think about is, who could you make time for and show up for this week? Um, who could you show up for this week? The, the kinds of people that Jesus showed up for, people who are struggling, people that nobody's paying attention to, people that have so much to overcome to, to be become who God's called them to be. Who could you show up for this week? And the last question I want, want to ask you is, uh, where do you need Jesus to show up for you this week? Where does Jesus just need to show up for you this week? Where do you need to feel your God empathizing with you, loving you in the places that you're so sad or so hurt or struggling? Where do you need Jesus to show up for you? So what's wrong in the world? Who do you need to make time for to show up this for this week? And then where do you want Jesus to show up in your life this week? Uh, thanks so much for letting me be with you. Uh, love you. Uh, love your leaders. Love Sam. Love Caroline. And I'm um, just so thankful that I got to be here with you this week. See you soon. Mm -hmm.